go. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is an emergency meeting here at the Knights at the Round Table because there's some news going on in the horror community. Um, we got word that Halloween Horror Nights in Orlando will be happening with the first maze being announced Beetlejuice. We also got word here in California that California theme parks will be allowed to reopen April 1st, um, which is leading towards a good sign to somewhat of a haunt season this year in California. And yeah, those, that's pretty much the two biggest news. Guys, let's talk about Beetlejuice, man. This is something that was at the event for a weekend last year in Orlando, and now it's going to be a uh, full season house this year uh, for Halloween Horror Nights, which begs the question... Is this was this supposed to be a joint announcement? Uh, uh, well, let me let's just start off with this. Uh, uh, welcome everyone. We're glad to see you all here in attendance uh, <laughs> as a viewer of the nights here of the round table. So we have a very very strict strict agenda tonight on what we need to talk about in this emergency meeting. Um, and I would like to start off with uh, Tony did make an error. This is the second maze announced. They did make it a surprise announcement last year. Puppet Theater. With would, a, but, puppet, puppet theater. however, hold on. If you pay attention to the website, they said this is the first house announcement when they announced Ooh. it. So, did they so do you think they got theater? rid of – did they scrap it after making the Peacock special? They got leaked. Did they scrap it? Got leaked. And they were like, we can't have our properties leaked because we're above that. <laughs> that just motivated me to want to go through it more now after seeing that, though. I, know, I was excited after I saw got it leaked. After it got leaked, they accidentally put it on Peacock. But that's not what we're here to discuss, though. We're just here to discuss the big guy. The name. You don't want to say three times. Beetle guys. You can only say it, you can only say it twice. Beetle guys. You better be extra nice. Who's the Sammy's just flowing spit freaking rhymes up in here, huh? Yeah, he's spitting, lose, oh, spitting fire. That's what I'm here for. Did we lose fire Will? Is what, I think we lost Will. But don't don't count the number of fires because that'll be an issue. Apparently, <laughs> that's not that's not what, that's not what we're here for. But yes, I'm excited to be uh, honest. As we've lost Mr. Will Martinez to the upside down, I am excited that we will be getting a Beetle Guy maze. And to answer your question that you did pose, I didn't forget. I do think it should have been a joint announcement, but I think they they made the announcement. Prior to the theme park announcement, I think, um, and so I think they were. I think that was an oops on their part. Plus, I think it's a Universal has to figure out how to get back in operations. And I mean, I know that they're going to be doing their taste of Universal or whatever name it is. Um, so I know they're going to be doing that. So I'm looking forward to that. You know, them opening the park that way, and then you know that's basically what I'm considering a soft opening. Um, and then, you know, as they get to an actual opening. So I do think it should have been a joint announcement, but I think the stars, uh, didn't align as they could have. Well, uh, I agree with you. It would have been cool if it was announced at the same time, but, um, as we, we all know, Florida, Orlando, they're kind of, uh, they're open over there. And here in California, Universal is not. So I don't think that they could – it would have been ideal for them to do it together. But I think Orlando was just like, hey, you know, we're going to put this out there because we already know kind of where we're at and what's going to happen. And I feel like – I don't know. You know, I don't know. This is just me thinking off, you know, in my mind. I feel like every like people in charge, like the higher-ups – maybe kind of knew that this announcement was coming maybe for California and maybe Orlando was just like, we're not going to wait. We're going to announce this. And then, cause I think it was pretty much was, it was the same day that they kind of were like, Oh, and, and you know, Orlando's doing this and then California, you know, theme parks are going to open. And, and I will say at the very beginning, six flags did say by, I think it was April or by spring that they were going to open. But, um, I don't think Universal could have announced that, you know, they were doing, you know, announce a Beetlejuice maze when the park's not even open because it was just been like, well, what are you talking about? Like, it just kind of wouldn't make any sense. Well, for, you know, for me personally, I'll just be like, 
well, you guys aren't even open and you're talking about you know maze for um you know horror nights or even talking about horror nights or october like let, i would just be like let's get the park open with something and you know eventually they did later on announce that they were going to do like a tasting in which it like anthony said is a great thing because we're looking forward to things getting better and being able to do more events at these theme parks right what do you think will um i think that's a really good point i think uh I'm not entirely sure. I mean, it's anybody's guess, but I'm not entirely sure that uh, Universal was like aware of um, of the city's like annou- like impending announcement or something like that. Because it felt to me like uh, like if that were the case, um, obviously Universal is not going to announce a Horror Nights maze when their park isn't even open yet. That just makes logistically absolutely no sense. Because I mean, like, it's gonna confuse people. People are gonna be like, uh, "Isn't like, is the park open or something?" Um, but also, I feel like they would have pushed it back um, to like sync them up because there's a reason that they always announce those at the same time. It must be good, like, I don't know, having like all guns firing on like all Universal at once, giving out advertisement, you know, in like certain waves. Um, so. Uh, it just it felt to me like a, a bit of a like a, that, that it happened so close to each other, but that's anybody's guess, you know. Yeah, I agree, man. And there's a reason why I brought up California theme parks. Obviously, we don't really cover too much of like the theme parks during the the the, the normal year. Uh, we really cover them towards haunt season because uh, we we focus more around the horror aspect of things. Um, I brought up California theme parks because. Uh, obviously, as you guys know, if anyone lives in California or if you're watching elsewhere, uh, California had announced that they were going to be uh, allowing theme parks to open April 1st. Uh, does that mean they're going to all open up on April 1st? No, that just means that that's the date that they can start opening up if they are ready and guidelines are met. Um, obviously, they start at 15% uh, for all theme parks in uh, California. And then as you go lower in tiers with you know less cases, uh, you go up to 25 and then 35. And then if it gets really better from there, they'll probably go half and then eventually back to full capacity. That could take some time. Um, but I brought up that because there's another theme park, obviously, that we're going to be – we were supposed to be talking about with this episode of Knights of the Round Table, but we'll talk about uh, for the for the next episode after that because it's a big topic. Not Scary Farm. Um, another another haunt we were waiting to see if it was going to do anything. Obviously, right now they're doing their Taste of Boysenberry Festival, which Rob, prior to this recording, had just come back from. Um and so they're you know they're doing their tastings again and everything so it's a sign it's looking like more and more parks at least the four major parks here in socal um we got of course disneyland knots universal and six flags all doing something uh whether to be a tasting or i know six flags is doing like a car event um so that's pretty cool uh and then of course sea world if you want to count sea world down there in uh, san diego they are doing also their own tasting event too um so it, it's looking good um, if if all goes planned, I'm really excited because actually SeaWorld itself is going to be bringing Hollow Scream over to the uh, West Coast. For all of you guys who know, obviously when we do East versus West, uh, Eddie and I always discuss the differences between Not Scary Farm and uh, Hollow Scream because they were kind of like the two to closest to compare. Now we got a Hollow Scream on each coast. This is something big for us. This is a new haunt for us. Something we're going to be experiencing for the first time. Um, if everything goes to plan, come October. What are your guys' thoughts on Hollow Scream? We have not talked about that as a group yet. Uh, what do you guys think? What do you guys want to see? Um, will you guys go out to it? Because I know it's a little bit of a distance from all of us here. Um, so would you guys take a weekend to go out there? Uh, what do you guys think about this new uh, haunt coming to SeaWorld? I guess I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and jump on this. Um, I'm excited for it. Any new haunt, uh, any new attraction, uh, I'm there for it. Um, from where I'm at, uh, it is about an uh, hour and a half to two hour drive. For me, not an issue at all because, you know, I'll make a whole day of it. And, you know, it, it, it's just it, for a haunt, especially if it, it does happen. And, you know, I've never experienced it. All I've heard is just, you know, uh, other people talk about it. So I would be excited and I would definitely um, be 
be down there in 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 SeaWorld in in San Diego and uh you'll catch me there. So it's not the drive's not too big. I'll drive 3 4 hours for for a, a good haunt. So sweet. Yeah, um it's it's super exciting uh seeing an entirely new uh haunt. Um of course we have a lot of uh competition down here. Uh, it makes sense because you know San Diego you're kind of putting in it's a bit of a reach and exactly make it out to the you know more northern uh, theme parks and whatnot uh to hit these haunts so you can give like a new market i guess um i'll have to see if i can hit it up i would love to um but i still got a lot of other stuff i've never hit up uh, knots uh, and uh multiple others and so got a lot of stuff to check out maybe that might have to wait <laughs> Yeah, if it comes back another year, right? I mean, I'm hoping it does does successful. So, uh, Sammy, uh, what do you think, man? This is something another thing we could do while you're down here, man. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm on Rob's page. We're making a day out of it. If we do, if we track it to San Diego, there's only uh, another yeah. thing on my mind. Old Town San Diego. Some, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah! Hell yeah! It's Old Town, baby. We eat it. <laughs> <laughs> go to that they have a restaurant there what is it called where it, it, there's like a restaurant where they purposely are rude to you I'm not if I'm going to San Diego I'm not going to swear they're going to be rude to me I'm going to <laughs> Abuelita it's what you, she's going to send me the best Mexican food you'll ever have fresh made tortillas she's probably been up since 5 a.m. making I'm like I'm about that life he wants and to you're going to get man. some fat belly right there and then you're gonna be ready for the hunt. And Dan, yeah, and he's gonna want to. He's gonna want to go back to the car, take a nice little nap, and he's ready to go. Yeah, I mean, you can nap on a bench in San Diego. And, oh. <laughs> <laughs> now you're talking he's gonna to nap me, right, right right in front of Shamu's tank. <laughs> no, I don't, no I don't, I'm scared of Shamu. I had a really bad experience with Shamu. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have bad experiences, man. You almost died on a Knott's Berry Farm ride. You freaking almost died at Sea World. I almost died. I, mean, at I, died at... I witnessed that one. Wait, what the hell was Guy at Disneyland? When your freaking lap bar wouldn't go down for Haunted Mansion? <laughs> oh, yeah. That was true. <laughs> no, my SeaWorld one's kind of funny. Um, yeah. Oh, you're not <laughs> okay? You're just going to leave us like a fucking Marvel post credit scene, huh? It's kind of funny. Do you, want me to, do you want me to share it? Yeah, I want it's you to share it. And I'm, I'm, I'm already amused and sucked into it. All right. All right. I'm probably like either middle school or really high school. One or the other. Um, and I took a family trip down to San Diego. Of course, we went to Old Town. We ate it up. Um, then we went down to SeaWorld. Um, and, um, we watched the Shamu show. And we came out of the Shamu show. And uh, when you come out of there, like, you can see inside the tanks. And there's a little Shamus or well, Killer Wells or whatever their really na- what their real name is. Um, and one of them was very excited to see us. And just kept swimming around, right? It was cool. Like everyone was happy. I mean, like, oh, cool! I get to see the, you know, get to see the killer wall. But it just kept getting more and more <laughs> excited. <laughs> and uh, the, you want to ask why the water is pretty salty? I'll tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Leave it at man. that. Yeah, wow, my story. You're, a, you're a whole another enigma. <laughs> I was thinking when we go to Old Town, we can go visit that old haunted uh, freaking hotel. That's con. That's another video on top of the Hell Scream one right there. No, I, I don't deal. I don't deal with the paranormal. You already know that. Dude. You already know that. Uh, you're gonna be coming in you, as the camera guy. That's why you. That's why you're like, oh yeah, let's go to Vegas. We'll go to Zach Vegas. Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> this guy's out that door. What if we go during the day? Uh, you already fun to know. I already almost be dying everywhere else I go, apparently. So I'm gonna <laughs> trip and fall and touch something I'm not supposed to touch. And next thing it's you a know, hotel. I'm not you can so- touch everything. Bro, I'm I'm telling you, things are tw- things are twisted out there. <laughs> I've heard of people like taking things from hotels, like a pillow or something. Okay, well, we're not with, gonna take things. Well, we're just gonna go investigate. Bro, I'm gonna I'm gonna accidentally take a shampoo cap, and next thing you know, <laughs> we link for life. <laughs> oh man, but you know, Hell of Scream coming to coming to San Diego. I think it's a smart move 
to them bringing that event over here on the on the west coast now i'm sorry there's two that i know of on the east coast obviously uh williamsburg and tampa um those are the two that i know of there's probably more in the states but i don't know but now i guess the same company who who does bush gardens is the owner of SeaWorld as well so they're doing uh hallow scream here on the west coast new haunt uh if anybody knows about hallow scream uh you know on east versus west we would talk about how they're kind of like not they're pretty much like not scary from they do nothing but original mazes um so it's going to be a new uh like will said a competitive market for uh both obviously uh you know you got six flags knots hayride and queen mary who do originals as well obviously kind of horror nights is on its own kind of level with the ips and and all whatnot um but i think it's going to be a fun competitive market to see who's got the best haunt it comes time haunt season and it's going to give us a great topic to talk about here on the knights of the round table uh what we thought was the best what, what needed some work um should be fun for the future of haunt season man i'm, I'm really excited we got a lot of great news coming, obviously, with the Beetlejuice maze coming to uh, Orlando for sure, coming back. Oh, after only being open for one weekend, they brought it back. And, of course, we got California theme parks opening up, which is looking great for haunt season as far as Universal Studios goes, not Scary Farm goes, um, Hallow Scream goes, uh, even potentially LA Haunted Hayride. Because now that theme parks will be open, they'll allow... You know, usually that takes place at Griffith Park. Last year it was in San Dimas. Uh, depending on where they end up, they can probably work something out to do something, especially because their event is completely all outdoors. Um, so that works for them. Uh, but I'm, I'm really excited, man. The future of, of 2021 haunt season is looking really good. Uh, I know about a month ago, two months ago, we were all kind of up in the air as to where this was going to go. Uh, and it seems like every day this year so far has been kind of getting a little bit more positive as we go. And I like to see that. I like to uh, help share that with the haunt community to give them um, hope. Uh, here, we're not trying to give you false hope. We're just going off information that we've been given from news sources, all that stuff. And we're just trying to make the positive out of it um i'm excited guys i hope you guys were all excited man this is gonna be a fun fun time if all this had does happen man really excited and also what's really cool about uh 2020 gave opportunity for a lot of new newcomers to the haunt like sphere uh new companies doing drive through haunts and etc so there could be a lot of new players in like the smaller like tier of haunts that might give us something really unique that we haven't seen before I think that might be kind of interesting. Definitely. I also can report today um, our favorite people over at the Pirates Cave have started construction on their 2021 haunt. So they are very uh, faithful and hopeful that we are going to get a good haunt maze walkthrough season. Um, and the reason why I say maze walkthrough because I think I only walked through about two mazes last season. Three mazes if you want to count the corn maze. So uh, but, No, actually even more because when I went to Arizona, I, I went through more. So... Uh, Bro, the corn maze, did they play Freak on a Leash? Uh, no. <laughs> Sammy's in his own world. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that's, a, that's, such a, that's such a great joke. How can you guys not laugh at that one? Come on. <laughs> I think we're more laughing at the fact that you were the only one laughing, busting up here, or <laughs> yeah. we're over here trying to end this video. <laughs> Bro, Freak on a Leash is a banger. <laughs> Uh, anyway, to move on with that, um, <laughs> if you guys enjoyed today's update on the Knights of the Round Table, uh, please hit that like button with that subscribe button and those bell notifications to be aware every time we put up a new video. Um, check out our social media. Sammy, what's our social medias? I was just about to mute myself. Uh, it's real easy now. Um, Twitter is uh, at Knights of Horror. Not to be confused with Instagram, which is at The Knights of Horror. You can um, and Twitter. Knights is spelled with an N. You can, yeah. Make sure. Now, there's no K in the beginning. My door just <laughs> randomly opens. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about paranormal <laughs> stuff, and then your door randomly opens. Door just opens. No, it's, it, it's silly, and I can see it. Yeah, I can see, too. <laughs> it's because my food is here. Okay. Tony said hi. Hi. She said hi. Anyway, uh, let's wrap this up so, so Sammy can go eat at 9.41, almost 10 in the morning, or 10 at night. Um, let's it's 10 in the morning. All right. <laughs> 10 in the morning. <laughs> All my head of time. I'm in the future. Um, thank you well, guys I'm so much for watching, this, bro. for watching this video. Uh, stay tuned. We have uh, more content coming your way. And with that being said, we will see you guys next time. Don't be 2000 and late, boys.